Hi all, welcome to today's session. We will make our initial beginning towards uh, two important topics. One is going to be nature of supply and the other one would be on levy under GST. Both levy of tax and nature of supply. We have just completed the very important taxable event and having completed taxable event, having understood what is supply, what will be included in supply even without consideration, what would be excluded from supply or what would neither considered as supply of goods nor considered as supply of services, having a fair understanding on those aspects. The next topic that we are going to discuss over here is going to be nature of supply. I'm aware that yes, we have to discuss something relating to different types of supply and kinds of supply. I think we had made earlier a discussion, even otherwise there would be a particular time that would come at that time I would take a moment and step in and discuss about that. Before that, coming back to nature of supply, a very important section. Section 7, 8 and 9 of IGST Act discuss about nature of supply. Just understand it is not a discussion from CGST Act. It is a discussion from IGST Act, Integrated Goods and Services Tax Act. When it comes to IGST Act, Section 7 and 8 more specifically, whose ultimate aim is to decide whether a transaction is a interstate supply or an intrastate supply. The whole focus at which section 7A would function is whether a transaction would be covered as an interstate supply or a transaction would be covered as an intrastate supply. Certain parameters are there. The sections comes out with its subsections and designs in a particular way. That is what we will read for the next 20 minutes or so and then step into levy. As part of our discussion relating to, relating to nature of supply. Interstate supply. Section 7 of IGST Act discuss about it when a particular transaction will be called as interstate supply. Let me repeat. When a particular transaction will be called as interstate supply is a specific discussion which is being made under section 7 of IGST. Similarly, when a particular transaction will be called as a intrastate supply is a discussion which is forming part of your Section 8 of IGST Act. Do I need to remember this section? You have a case study question, a scenario question on the topic of nature of supply coupled with place of supply guaranteed for more than six marks, exams after exams. It has been proved that exam after exam, this topic is getting only day by day more important and most important. At no stretch of imagination, the topic gets its weakening entries. No. So, from a little exam perspective, yes, this is important. Parking that discussion. From an understanding perspective, also, this topic gains its moment because this is the decision maker to you to decide whether a particular activity is an interstate supply or a particular activity is an intrastate supply, having understood supply. The next question that comes up to us is, will it be treated as an intrastate supply or an interstate supply? Now, how would one make that decision? Section 7 in-houses itself, five subclasses. 
71275. So, if the location of supplier, if the location of supplier and the location of, sorry, if the location of supplier and the place of supplier, if the location of supplier and place of supply are going to be in different states, different union territory or a state and a union territory, then no doubt that activity would be treated as an interstate supply. So first understanding at a very preliminary level understanding, very basic level understanding, not a very great understanding at all. All great understanding are all still waiting for us to learn. How a nature of supply is decided. First basic understanding. Always nature of supply is decided based on two variables. Variable number one, location of supplier. Variable number two, place of supply. If both are going to be in the same state, then it's a separate discussion. It's intra. If both are going to be in different state, what both location of supplier and the place of supply are going to be in two different state, two different union territory, a state and union territory, then, then it would be treated as interstate supply then it would be treated as interstate supply followed by followed by this determination of place of supply this determination of place of supply for goods will be determined as per section 10 of igst act and this determination of place of supply for services would be determined as per section 12 of igst act so, for goods, we will refer section 10 and determine place of supply. Already we know location of supplier. Sir, location of supplier is state A, place of supply is state B, then both are different state, it would be treated as interstate supply. Sir, location of supplier is state A, I run through the services uh, section for place of supply, which is section 12. I arrived place of supply is going to be in Union Territory 1. So location of supplier state A. Place of supply is going to be your state, uh, sorry, Union Territory A. Then it would be treated as again interstate supply. First takeaway, the learnings is on location of supplier and place of supply. Second takeaway, in case of goods, the place of supply need to be determined as per section 10 of IGST Act. In case of services, the place of supply has to be determined as per section 12, subsection, sorry, section 12 of IGST Act. In fact, in other words, section 1 and section, sorry, section 7, subsection 1 and section 7, subsection 3. That is your place of sub nature, uh, inter, uh, interstate supply sections. When it starts, it would start like this. Subject to section 10. Subject to section 10, comma. If location of supplier of goods and place of supply for such goods are going to be in two different state, two different union territory, a state and a union territory, it would be treated as interstate supply. Seven, subsection three would read like this. Subject to, subject to section 12 of IGST Act. Subject to section 12, IGST Act will not come. Subject to section 12, comma. If location of supplier of service and place of supply of service are going to be two different state, two different union territory, state and a union territory. It would be treated as interstate supply. Two subsections we are merging and we look at one go. 
a very important discussion followed by in case of import of goods in case of import of goods, though there is a separate section for determination of place of supply government want to make a clear understanding in case of import of goods until the goods does not cross the custom frontiers of india in other words customs duty is not paid in case of import of goods in case of import of services all those services imported into india always look at that wording always it will be interstate supply section 7 subsection 2 discuss about in case of goods imported into india section 7 subsection 4 discuss about in case of services imported into india in case of these import of goods cross read your constitutional discussion article 269a of constitution of india made out a point very clear in case of import of goods in case of import of services central government in other words parliament will have an exclusive power to tax and that said transaction will be deemed as interstate supply i think correctly the law has been defined in the way in which it is taking forward import of goods interstate supply import of services interstate supply what is import of goods import of services i think we are all aware of it we have crossed that discussions we collect your import of service when we define for section 71b import of goods i think generally you are all are aware taking goods from a place outside india to india is treated as import of goods so that sums up the mandatory understanding always import of goods import of services would be interstate supply sometimes supplier of goods and services were located in india and place of supply is going to be outside india very careful be it very careful supplier is in india place of supply outside india it would be treated as a interstate supply supply of goods supply of services when the supplier is located in india and place of supply is outside india it would be treated as interstate supply similarly supply of goods and services or both to a sez or supply of goods or services by a sez either an sez developer or a sez unit located inside a sez what is my final takeaway or saying sir every kind of export like transactions export like transactions every kind of sez transactions always would be treated as interstate supply always always would be treated as interstate supply so coming back here it would be very difficult for someone to think a uh, supply to acz as a intra state supply and just for your information section 75 would come with a non abstaining clause a overriding effect which means among the other sections in the chapter that section is a superior section so it overrides other section so given that background location of supplier is in india place of supply outside india it would be treated as interstate supply similarly supply of goods to acz supply of goods to uh, supply of goods to acz supply of services to acz it would be treated as 
interstate supply. All those supply of goods by SEZ, SEZ supplies no outside. That would also be treated as interstate supply. So SEZ will have two activities. SEZ will procure goods, procure services. So outside you will have a supplier who is supplying to SEZ. That would be treated as interstate supply. Again, SEZ offer after procurement, after processing, it will do an export activity or it will sell domestically. That is also interstate supply. At no stretch of imagination, an SEZ can go outside the control of central government. It has to be within the control of central government. That is the idea behind all these uh, uh, drafting. Okay. Beyond that, nothing. No one would come out and say that uh, drafting ideology. But the drafting ideology remains at this level. Coming back here. Having said, these are all going to be the understanding. So, in case of exceptional discussion, what do we mean by an exceptional discussion? If a transaction is not covered by, if a transaction is not covered by intrastate supply, then it will be covered as interstate supply. So let me repeat it. It's a very challenging proposal. Maybe now we will not take up examples for this consciously. We will have to reach a particular level. We have to complete a topic called as place of supply, which will be our uh, third, fourth topic. Once we complete a topic called as place of supply, after that, we will have a complete domain understanding of this topic. Once we have a complete understanding of this topic, maybe, yes, I would agree with you. We will be able to uh, meticulously touch upon this point. 7.5c If it is not, it is a supply of goods or services. No doubt about it. Supply of goods or services in the taxable territory not being a intrastate supply. If it is not covered under intrastate supply, it would be covered as an intrastate supply. Exceptional discussion. That is, sir, as of for the moment, understand this as others. There is something called as others, no. Very popularly will write. You put this 75C as others. We will take it up with an appropriate example at a correct time. Maybe this time it would not be possible. And our intention is not to take up this proposals. So what you are trying to say? There is a transaction. That transaction cannot be covered. The transaction is not covered under Section 8, which is intrastate supply. That transaction when it is not covered under 8, automatically not covered under 8, automatically it will come to 75C. 75, for the moment, understand. 75, sufficient. That is a good understanding. 75. Why it is covered here? It is not an intrastate supply. So it is covered as an interstate supply. So do we have transactions like this? Yes, we have transactions like this. But that requires a level 3, level 4 learning. Uh, level 3 learning could be on some more detailed analysis of these discussion with a place of supply. And then we will go to the pinnacle of it and touch that highest level. Coming back here, getting into our discussions relating to section 7, a small recap completely of section 7. As far as section 7 is concerned, one. As far as section 7 is concerned, where the government comes out and says, in case of, in case of, if both location of supplier and place of supply is going to be in two different states, two different union territory, a state and a union territory, no doubt it would be treated as interstate supply, be it goods, be it services. Both will come, place of supply for both would be determined from different section, but uh, would be that. Let me repeat it. Sometimes exam question will give you situations 
by reading the situation first you will use your section 10 or 12 if it is goods section 10 if it is services you will use 12 once you use this sections you will determine place of supply once you determine place of supply then only you will determine what the nature of supply so to determine nature of supply one of the preceding factor is place of supply now for our discussions i may give straight away the place of supply but the real learning comes in after discussion of place of supply import of goods import of services would be treated as your interstate supply export of service in other words supplier is in taxable territory place of supply outside india interstate supply Supplier of goods or services to an ICZ, interstate supply. A transaction not covered by intrastate supply, no, no botheration, it could be covered by interstate supply. Coming back, here. getting into a last part of our discussion on place of supply, oh, sorry, nature of supply. Section 8 comes out and highlights to us very meticulously. If location of supplier of goods or services and place of supply, if location of supplier and place of supply is going to be in the same state or is going to be in the same union territory, Location of supplier is also state A. Place of supply is also state A. Then the nature of supply will be intrastate supply. No doubt. Place of supply for goods will be determined as per section 10. Place of supply for services would be determined as per section 12. That fundamental principle is always there. However, however, there are some exceptions. What are those exceptions? If the transaction is going to be a transaction either to a SEZ or by an SEZ, then it is not covered by 8. In case if the transaction is going to be goods imported into India, then it is not covered by 8. In case if it is a supply of goods to a foreign tourist, foreign tourist is a conscious word I am using, a foreign tourist, yes, as per who is, the, who is covered by section 15 of IGST Act, then this section is not applicable. Now this section is not applicable in three circumstances. If it is an SEZ, why is it? Always it is an interstate supply. This is how we saw now. Yes, is that means very simple. You can close your eyes and answer. The moment you listen somewhere that word yes, is that under the recipient category. Okay, sir. For, for that matter, under the supplier category, it would always be treated as a intrastate supply. It cannot be brought in under intrastate supply. Similarly, in case of all those goods imported into India, no doubt it is again an interstate supply, followed by supply of goods made to a foreign tourist. It would be treated as intrastate supply. What we have just discussed is a level 1, level 2 discussion. A level 3 discussion on this topic is pending. A level 4 discussion on this topic is pending and level 4 is the highest level which has been required in my view. Level 1, level 2 will help us in understanding levy more comfortably. 
reverse charge more comfortably and all those uh, compliances for registration all that and all but what gives us the best understanding is only the other two levels maybe i would put it in this way that what we have completed of nature of supply is about more than 65% of its discussion but still we have about another 35% of discussion pending on this stuff in fact those discussions are the your level your level important discussions and it is little tough to learn it as it is from the books which are associated with us coming back here i'll take up some questions i want all of you to answer uh, this just to test are we all on the same page or not beyond that nothing you all know i don't know anything okay so come back here just want to learn from you are we all on the same page to start our discussion location of supplier is tamil nadu location of location of recipient was andhra pradesh and place of supply place of supply of goods for a particular transaction was was andhra pradesh now i want to know your nature of supply so let me repeat all of you have your chat box available good a few of you started to answer good so it would be a it would be a interstate supply as you all very rightly highlighted i'll come up with the answer sometime later consciously location of supplier of goods is tamil nadu location of recipient yes karnataka and place of supply of goods you are not supposed to fundamentally question an examiner A examiner sometime will give questions like this only yeah so your question number 2 is going to be interstate supply interstate supply super all of you all right all of you all true good it would be a intra state supply location of supplier is in kerala location of recipient is in andhra pradesh and place of supply of services is in kerala
yes intra inter so it's going to be a game of henceforth permutation combination on all these and you are all coming up with very rightly so what do i do is location of supplier is kerala location of recipient is kerala uh, acz located in kochi and place of supply of service is also okay yes and try enter e location of supplier location of supplier maharashtra location of recipient maharashtra and place of supply of services yes. he exports goods us so question number vivekanandan check 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 For my E, if your answer is for my E, then you have to check your answer. La, the last question, USA question, your answer is you have to check. Done. Yes. Oh, you can play the game. Keep on playing it. That's all. You are all getting correct answer. When you all get correct answer, no, I will not continue the game. Until you get correct answer, I will continue the game. so the moment you start getting you're all getting correct answers i'm 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 losing interest in playing the game okay now here this would be treated as uh, not interested yeah interested supply followed by location of supplier place of supply yes intra location of suppliers so basically this closes our discussion relating to our understanding on nature and scope of supply lot of you got it right good so all of you are all well versed experts in um, what is it experts in uh, nature of supplies now we will move forward to a last discussion very simple discussion see sometimes some services are provided by the suppliers in territorial waters it's it, it do happen sometimes services are provided near uh, territorial waters uh, what do we mean by this in case if you are going to ask me take some situations that uh, a supplier of goods or services should go and drop some goods in the territorial waters 
sometime a service provider from the domestic should go and do some services to a ship which is anchored in the territorial waters in those situations one doubt will come how to determine place of supply so this is applicable only for that kind of discussion where where the place of supply of goods or services is in territorial waters sir i don't know sir i have been asked i have been taken inside the sea for about 84 nautical mile and i have been asked to do some services in a ship how do i know which is place of supply if, if i take a bus and go i know i was uh, air lifted through a chopper and again i was uh, brought down in the ship through a in 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 the ship in a chopper then where is the question of me knowing which location which well, i don't know anything went with some corrections and the ship started to run then okay we are all happy and we left it <laughs> maybe had a little foreign drink and left it. that's all that's how the fellow will speak beyond that he will not speak anything very specific but taking up more carefully how to determine place of supply for this now where section 9 comes out and says place of supply shall be the coastal state or the territory union territory which is nearest to the baseline ask the ship one question which is your nearest port from the current location they will say my nearest port is vizag then place of supply is andhra pradesh my nearest port is goa place of supply is goa my nearest port is gujarat gujarat port then place of supply is gujarat of course they have to come up with all those 34 ports that are there 30 30 33 34 ports that are there so which is going to be your nearest for me nearest port is karikal port which is basically pondicherry so which is your nearest port from the place where you anchored and where we are providing our technical services or we are supplying our goods what is your nearest port my nearest port is this that decides the place of supply in case if the services are performed in territorial waters because many times services are performed inside territorial waters also just be aware of it and this would be applicable largely when a company provides services to vessels vessels ships uh, all those water related uh, supply of goods or services in those areas yes this is applicable largely so that sums up our discussion completely maybe this just you park it and keep it at your um, somewhere in a portion of mind uh, exceptionally can be tested till now we don't have an exam question currently been tested on this topic may come we am not sure because this itself its applicability itself is very rare then where is the question of uh, being used that closes us with a topic called as nature of supply before we getting into a topic called as levy let's close uh, two diagrams which we need to take it up as part of our discussion on those uh, before levy discussions are no doubt one is going to be a clear discussion on different kinds of supply i personally believe some of we have already discussed about it but i don't want to take a chance relating to this discussion so that's why Uh, i i want to discuss it in case let it we we have discussed it also let it be we will take it up the types of supply under gst can be broadly classified into one which we all know a taxable supply followed by a exempted supply taxable supply exempted supply then zero rated 
supply followed by non taxable supply no supply see uh, these are all uh, your broadly different kinds of uh, supply different types of supply under gst so i'm sure uh, we would have referred it at different different location i am not sure have we had a clear discussion on this now the whole supply can be broadly classified only in this letter it can be only classified only this different types we don't have any other type now only here you will have a challenge that a few of this will come as a combination that is where the importance of your uh, composite supply mixed supply all this comes into place now in case if there is going to be one or two elements or brought together and then it comes up then what would happen so points for our discussion your different types of supplies can be all this or different types or can i call it as kind kind type all these but types are different types of supply if a person pay taxes then it would be treated as taxable supply let me repeat i want all of us to be very very clear on these concepts because um, many time we are facing challenges at the higher levels because people are having a lack of clarity in the word they interpret the words in the way in which they want for a lot of us exempted supply and non taxable supply are same i'm not denying but there is a subtle difference between both uh, even in the other note i am sorry to use in this way either poon kuda solalam pushponnu kuda solalam there is a difference in the way in which you call it in the way in which it has been there the purpose oh here also i am paying tax no, no. in a zero rated supply i won't pay tax i am sorry i won't pay tax but i would be entitled for certain benefits which again will be contrary when it comes to exempted supply in an exempted supply i don't pay tax again but i am not entitled for certain benefits so which put me under different positions in terms of my supply i would be in a better more position if it is a zero rated supply than an exempted supply so let's have that clarity which has been in bed again and again every time aggregate turnover for the purpose of registration for the purpose of various other aspects these words are referred to taxable supply all those supply of goods or services which is levyable all those supply of goods or services which is levyable to gst if it is levyable to gst then it would be treated as a taxable supply in other words any person if in case he is going to pay gst if someone is going to pay gst then no doubt he would be covered by a broader term called as taxable supply. taxable supply will take care of people who pay gst and something is levyable to gst if you go back by the verbatim definition then it is person who is levyable to gst this is pay gst someone who pay gst type of supply on that the next one exempted supply pen pen the goods or services and the goods or services is exempted wholly exempted from levy of gst wholly exempted from gst 
it also includes nil rate if any goods is liable for nil rate one is wholly exempted from gst or the other one is nil rate if some products are liable for nil rate then that nil rate is also wholly exempted from gst and which is liable to nil rate of tax no doubt followed by in case of zero rated supply it is going to be all those export of goods or services export of goods or services or supply of goods or services to SEs come back here points for our discussion is SEZ any supply of goods or services to SEZ it would be treated as your zero rated supply followed by non taxable supply what defined it goods or services not leviable to gst a pakka opposite of taxable supply when something is leviable to gst when something is leviable to gst then it would be treated as what a taxable supply a straight opposite one always ever time example for you will be alcoholic liquor for human consumption no doubt about it that will be all time favorite example followed by apart from alcoholic liquor for human consumption you can also until petrol is brought into gst you can also say that goods is not leviable to tax when you go back to section 91 of cgst act or 51 of cgst act which we will read in another 10 to 15 minutes you will come across that the levy section the levy section excludes petroleum products so until petroleum products are brought into gst it would still be continued as non taxable supply for various other purposes, you have to add this non-taxable supply. The only item you will ignore for your aggregate turnover for various other discussions of reversals, X, Y, Z, is that last fellow called as no supply. Let me repeat. Not considered as a supply if it's a supply only you can decide further now whether it is a taxable supply exempted supply or not first it is neither supply of goods nor supply of service category can kindly note neither supply of goods nor supply of service category sir what do you mean by this category the category I still remember my max teacher and uh, class teacher. Okay. Category. You are not covered. You are not at all forming part of the crowd. You are you are kept outside. At no stretch of imagination, you can be brought into my taxable event. A no supply will not form part of anything. 
no supply is an additional element that is being brought. Now, why I want here for us to make a discussion here is, I'm not sure how many of us very carefully noted some of those words in section 2, subsection 30 of composite supply or section 2, subsection 74 of mixed supply. Now, why I was highlighting this is, having said this, this is all different types of supply, all that and all. For a minute, we will go back there and discuss something and then come back here. You all read that, you all know what is composite supply, what is mixed supply, all that and all. Now, composite supply means supply made by a taxable person to a recipient consisting of two or more taxable supply of goods or services or both. I would give you an example. With this example, you try to define whether it is a composite supply or mixed supply. Okay. Because we also now discuss different types of supply so that we would be able to comprehend in a more better way. It was, he is a trader in rice. He is a trader, trader in rice. I am sure all of you are all aware. Unbranded rice, unbranded rice is exempted from GST. Unbranded rice is exempted from GST. So government will come out and pass an exemption notification. When your product becomes exempted, you would be categorized under exempted supply. Unbranded rice. Now what this trader does is, he transport the rice to the concerned person for which he collect a transportation charges. Okay. Very interesting to note. 10,000 rupees is the cost of rice. 500 rupees is the transportation charges collected by the supplier. When we go back and read a exemption notification, very particularly applicable for services, which comes out and says to us that all those services in connection with that are also going to get exempted. The services also are exempted. The services also not like liable to taxes. That is what they come out and say in case if it is transportation of rice. So he collected 10,000 rupees value, 500 rupees of this. This is one transaction. Rice is also exempted. Transportation rice is also exempted. In the invoice, he has shown 10,000 rupees and 500 rupees. Very interesting to note. There is a physician, more specifically, pediatric physician which means who handles all those kids. People less than, less than age of eight are being treated by this doctor. It's a habit for the pediatric uh, consultant, physician, that uh, there are some vaccinations that need to be given to the kid. Those vaccinations or he will say to the parent that you have to bring the kid on this day. At six months, this is the vaccine which need to be given. Eighth month, this is the vaccine that need to be given. Twelfth month, we have a prescribed chart for the first three years. And after that, based on recommendations, certain vaccines would be given to the child. Now, for our discussion, the parent brought the kid to the physician. When the parent brought the kid to the physician, the parent paid 10,000 rupees. 9,000 rupees towards the vaccine, 1,000 rupees towards the doctor services. For your information, 
doctor services are exempted from gst as it is a healthcare service it's exempted from gst through a service notification vaccines are liable to gst at 18% now i would now move on to the third example which we already discussed and closed in our last session there is a rail which transports the passengers and also it provides a food which is mandatory combo of that rail transportation take a example of shadapti express of this three combination combo 1 transport sale of rice transportation of rice combo 2 supply of vaccination and health care services combo 3 transportation of uh, transportation of passengers by rail and supply of food of this three combos which is going to be your combo set supply this is a next level discussion what we have learned from yesterday in our last session we have discussed which will be treated as composite supply combo 1 combo 2 ever since we had uh, the italian food been spreaded in india in a long way from then we have the habit of using this word called as combo okay so from that day yes we are all using why combo 1 and combo 2 is not treated as a composite supply i'll spend a time over there combo 1 there is nothing charm in this rice sales exempted freight exempted so what in any case you are not going to pay tax you are doing all are exempted you are out of the entry there is no charm in combo 1 that is why i am not picking up combo 1 combo 1 is in the process of elimination it got eliminated okay combo 2 is the crucial combo today's discussion is on combo 2 there is a pediatric doctor there is a hospital that hospital gets a patient in its emergency ward who's just holding his heart and rushing to the emergency table and he is uh, painting for his breath and because of this the trauma people who are all there the emergency care people who pressed him and should he is having a good breathing facility and the attenders are all went and met and the attenders are all briefed that this fellow has to be immediately done a bypass surgery or whatever be it some stunt this that need to be fixed in the walls that is got fixed very interesting to note the cost of the surgery included included a cost of a stunt a cost of a equipment 2 and 1/2 lakh rupees surgery 40000 rupees is the cost of the stunt 5 lakh rupees surgery 1 and 1/2 lakh rupees the cost of the stunt composite supply mixed supply composite or mixed take up your combo 2 which was almost on the same line vaccine along with health care services all medical equipments are liable at 18% gst health care services are exempted when a hospital collects 3 lakh rupees then how the decision is going to be taken is it a composite supply or is it a mix, mixed supply when i have one of my services is taxable and another services is exempted by government notification is it a composite supply or is it a mixed supply it is going to be a serious debate for the next 5 minutes quick that and mark my word if you had a learning from this uh, that's that's an extraordinary learning i i can give you an open bet no book is discussing about it nobody want to encroach uh, devil's domain quick quick 
mixed supply mixed supply okay shruti comes up composite supply hari priya comes up composite supply good vaishnavi comes up composite supply some of you saying composite supply can you come up why composite supply mixed supply i completely agree with you i i can smell why mixed supply which is clear but composite supply i'm not sure why composite supply what makes you to composite supply if you want me to unmute yourself i don't mind that very well you can at liberty you can do that you can unmute yourself and share your answers and views but this is a serious topic that is why we are revisiting this topic once again yes if you want you can unmute yourself and share people preferably who told the composite supply i want to understand your view oh naturally bundled edu evde ninga medical services and so vandale stunt vechi amichiruvom we have a package naturally bundled one fellow indian stent 40000 rupees one fellow us stent 1 and 1/2 lakh rupees there is the question of natural bundling you need to understand hari priya it's not for everybody i do same no you are a executive class seat number 1 or seat number 40 my meal serving is common naturally bundled understand it's well understandable but in these cases it's it's your uh, stunt decide the cost of the surgery i'm not joking very serious some of the hospitals has packages like this only <clears throat> yes 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 quick 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 anybody anything exempted supply means what exempted supply means if you want to exempt something no it's not nil patent nil patent if you want to exempt something first it should be taxable or you all agreeing to this proposition first if you want to exempt something it is something like this if you have if you are now at eight standard it is understood that you have cleared seven standard if you are now a exempted supply it is understood your product was taxable and government has exempted your product so you are now under a different color it doesn't mean that something will take away your basic characteristics which is taxable today if a product is an exempted supply very simple earlier it was a taxable supply government gave an exemption notification because of the exemption notification you are treated as an exempted supply for a minute let's assume if government withdraw the exemption notification automatically your product goes back to what taxable supply are we ready to buy a point that all exempted supplies are taxable supplies at one day because of the exemption notification today it is treated as a exempted supply are we prepared to buy this point a very crucial discussion highest level of discussion a peak level of discussions qualified professionals find it difficult to absorb and digest this discussion i want you to absorb and digest because you have no other option this will be tested in exam that is a challenge for us does all exempted supplies are one day a taxable supply yes or no does all exempted supply are taxable supply yes or no? very simple yes or no are you agreeing to it or not yes so if if along with the healthcare service if i put some stunt along with the vaccine if i merge my healthcare service 
will it be covered under the heading composite supply or not or straight away you will go to mixed supply it would be covered under the heading composite supply then you go further test it so the problem with some of us is we saw first entry healthcare service second entry stunt one tax one exempted one taxable no 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 composite supply sorry don't conclude like that that healthcare service was originally taxable then only because of the notification it gets a additional color called as exempt tax our crux discussion here is every exempted supply was originally a taxable supply first of all if it is not taxable then why you are exempt what is the need for you the government to exempt it otherwise it would be taxable let me repeat otherwise it would be taxable just to overcome that just just to overcome that yes we have we have this discussion coming back here every exempted supply was one day a taxable supply read through this notion read with that notion when you read with that notion now i want all of you to revisit your understanding a hospital which collects fees for the open heart surgery plus the cost of stunt okay not open heart surgery bypass surgery and the cost of stunt a points for our discussion is composite supply mixed supply let me repeat the the cost of the surgery and the stunt are together collected as a single price 3 and 1/2 lakh rupees first is it a composite supply or mixed supply quick 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 i want some answers some of us would have basically went on the premises and perception premises and perception that premises and perception that uh healthcare service is an example of supply okay healthcare service no doubt it is an exempted supply today earlier it was a taxable supply now is it naturally bundled the answer would be very correctly yes because the stunt which need to be fixed is not decided by the fellow who is laying down not decided by the fellow who is standing outside it is decided by the respective physician or his age he has so much longevity and uh, he in case for his age and things matters it would be beneficial if you use a particular stunt now understand it is not the fellow who is sleeping would come out and say no 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 you use me this stunt from us uk uh -huh, that fellow sir kindly save me that's all he is into that level only he never has a contractual ability so the question of not naturally bundling will not arise in these kind of services in case some of you are still not convinced in my view if you still not convinced only one aspect go back and read through your principal supply definition the moment you agree that yes healthcare services and the supply of stunt or inside medicine medicine to the inpatient all those hospitals consumables that happens inside the operation theater ot for which all our money collected kindly understand you have to if you have an opportunity to see through a hospital bill everything is money ot charges will be there ot consumables will be there it could be the syringe or it could be various consumables that happens all goes to a inpatient in an inpatient term not nothing is decided it's all left to the mercy of the physician 
it's his mercy this fellow stands up and rise before him now the point which i want to drive home is is it naturally bundled the answer would be a very clear yes taking a position it is not naturally bundled will be a little aggressive view let me repeat it is a little aggressive view many times the decision is the deci the decision to which medicine to be given which um, what to say which stunt to be fixed are all decisions of the respective physicians so the predominant element here is healthcare services additionally you require this goods to this services to protect him to run him so it would be treated as a composite supply my key takeaway or key takeaway of this discussion is taxable supply means it not only include on which you pay tax even an exempted supply earlier used to be a taxable supply all exempted supplies are taxable supply. somewhere have at the back of your mind be it a physician who uh, sorry a pediatric doctor who gives all those injection and collects 1000 rupees now let me repeat it you can buy that injection in what composition in what temperature at what dosage it has to be given is only that gentleman and just for your further information in case of pediatric uh, drugs every time the child is vaccinated the record is kept and strict in a particular place why tomorrow if the child got that particular disease or gets affected by that particular disease the indusion has a right to sue the doctor and the company in fact for that reason only it's a it's a more a responsibility you you can never come across a, a what is a, a pediatric doctor i am not talking of normal physicians pediatric physician where you speak to your best pediatric physician sir i will give drugs because that drugs would just cost you 4000 bucks only however he would from his end if it is sold it would be sold only at 9000 rupees only now if you, you would come out and say no no i am already a physician i am a, a, a nurse in this hospital that this i am a, a what is a, a, a brother in this hospital i have the access to this um, what is a medicines i will give you medicine you just vaccinate my child doctor would say get out very clear it's a clear responsibility given and which is more important than anything else so come back here the intention is somewhere we have to start learning our composite supply and mixed supply from this person that's just for your information and consumption i don't think so somebody at an exam level will drill down to this level and test you all the exam questions are still under the level of when a laptop is given with a bag when a laptop is in, uh, supplied with a installed with an os or it is a transportation of uh, passengers by train is served with a food a bread a butter a jam or it is a tie a wallet uh, uh, cuff links uh, uh, cuff links and uh, few other items put together as a man's gift this is how examiner are still testing you but be prepared for the next 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 discussions that are all associated word taxable supply is defined taxable supply means goods or services or both which is levyable to tax key term levyable to tax exempted supply is again defined exempted supply means supply of goods or services or both which attracts nil rate of tax or which may be wholly exempted from tax under section 11 of cgst act or under section 6 of igst act let me repeat it when it comes to nil rate we have only two services that are covered under nil rate and four goods that are covered under nil rate nil usage in gst is very very less predominantly everything is getting wholly exempted from gst and look at that wording of exempted supply and includes non taxable so exempted supply would include non taxable supply and non taxable supply means goods or services which is not levyable to tax sir something is not at all a goods or service then it is no supply 
something is a goods something is a service but not liable to tax then it becomes a non taxable there is a difference these are all subtle difference sir my funeral service no supply it is neither goods nor service no supply sir alcoholic liquor for human consumption non taxable supply it is a goods not liable to tax of course all the health care services education services are all can be examples of exempted supply and wherever you pay taxes then yes it would be treated as uh, taxable supply. that sums up our discussion uh, relating to different uh, kinds of supply under uh, gst coming back here So I think now this uh, diagram makes more sense to us uh, relating to understanding of what is going to be all these different types of stuff. So that sums up our key takeaways for this discussion and quickly moving forward towards uh, levy and collection of tax a very simple topic in my view uh, not a very great deliberation is required at a final level maybe at a earlier level uh, we need to spend a lot more time at your level majority of the points you know majority aspects you know then it is a lot more simpler proposition we have to discuss before me formally getting into any of those section levy under gst broadly can be classified under gst into two types a normal levy and a composition levy normal levy again taxes are paid by three different people many times by supplier we call it as forward charge on selected goods and services by the recipient we call it as reverse charge rarely by e-commerce operator where it is a levy on the e-commerce operator so coming back here that's all is in nutshell the whole levy propositions are going to if you if you carefully know i would one minute i would do one thing i would very recently done the diagram i would take up that diagram by the time once again from this guy just a minute so i think when we have the opportunity to 
understand this diagram in its nutshell, I think we would have a clear uh, learning of the sections that are in our hand. Our discussions is like this. Broadly, the levy itself can be categorized into two types, normal levy and composition levy. Composition levy is a separate discussion which is applicable only in case of intrastate supply. Somebody is going to do all those transactions within the state, within, within, within the state, intrastate supply. Only then no, your composition levy is possible. Normal levy is very common. Be it interstate supply of goods services, be it intrastate supply of goods or services, both are covered. Now, be it both kind of levies, either we are going to come out and say the supplier of goods or services is liable to pay tax to the government, which is very popularly called as forward charge or regular charge. Sometimes on selected goods and services, we would come out and say recipient is liable to pay tax. And on notified services alone, we will say e-commerce operator is liable to pay tax. Our discussion will move exactly in this line only. We would not deviate from anything. Ever pattern in the same line only, our discussions are also going to move. Because I already had a diagram, I'm not inclined to draw a diagram and spend some of your time. But in any case, coming back here, getting back to the levy section on the mainstream discussion. Yes. As far as levy is concerned, If it is uh, intrastate supply, then Section 9 of CGST Act and Section 9 of respective state SGST Act is applied. If it is an interstate supply, Section 5 of IGST Act is applied. Our first decision will be whether it is a supply or not. Once arriving supply, having said that yes, there is a supply, the next question that we will decide is what is the place of supply? The third question for which we will search answer is what is the nature of supply? And the fourth question is only levy. Let me repeat. Supply then, what is the place of supply for this transaction? Then, what is the nature of supply for this transaction? The nature of supply only directs you whether it is an intrastate supply or interstate supply. So, assume the transactions that we are going to take up all are intrastate supply. How to decide the levy? Very simple. If it is an intrastate supply, then it is leviable to CGST and SGST. There is a tax called as Central Goods and Services Tax. There is a tax called as CGST, Central Goods and Services Tax. Will be levied on all intrastate supply of goods or services. On all intrastate supply of goods or services as usual except alcoholic liquor for human consumption and petroleum product. Always alcoholic liquor is excluded but until petroleum is brought into GST net, petroleum products are excluded. Otherwise it would pop up. On what you will calculate the tax? We will calculate the tax on the value which is determined as per section 15. Next question came, on what rate you will calculate the tax? The rate will be the rate that is notified 
by central government in consultation with gst council however the rate of cgst shall not exceed 20% that is a overall cap often doubts comes to us sir so 20% only means currently i am charged 28% as usual you are aware 28 is a combination of two numbers 14 cgst plus 14 sgst we are reading only cgst act that 14 itself cannot can go up to a maximum of 20 what cannot be charged is 25% cgst and 25% sgst not possible maximum of cgst 20 maximum of sgst is 20 in nutshell together 40% one product can be maximum taxed today 40% raw product is taxed the maximum peak rate is 28% on 32 goods and few services but for it rest all is taxed only at less than that percentage which is 18 12 and 5 So the core discussion for us is rate notified by central government in consultation with GST council. Maximum rate can be twenty percent. And how you will collect the tax? When I have to pay the tax? Don't be much bothered about it. It will be collected and paid in the manner prescribed. Section twelve and thirteen of CGST Act and SGST Act comes out and defines what is your time of supply and how to pay the tax. In what way tax can be paid? How much ITC you can use? How much cash you can use? All discussed in the respective portion. So, if it is a intra-state supply of goods, if it is a intra-state supply of services, then. Other than liquor meant for human consumption, other than petroleum product, it would be levyable to GST. Value determined as per Section 15. Rate as per notification, but not more than 20 percent. Payment of tax for the supply when the levy would trigger. As per time of supply, section twelve and thirteen, twelve for goods and thirteen for services, and the respective tax has to be paid by the registered person or taxable person. So, if we carefully note the levy section, it comes out and says there would be a levy on all the goods and services if somebody dealt. With. So, if a person is supplying goods, are limited. Who is located in Tamil Nadu, supply goods to a person in Andhra Pradesh, S Limited in Andhra Pradesh, and place of supply for the transaction is going to be Andhra Pradesh. Then he will check the transaction location of supplier Tamil Nadu, place of supply Andhra Pradesh. It is a interstate supply, not covered by this section. That's all. I would go. I should go and refer to my levy section from what IGST Act perspective. If location of supplier and place of supply is going to be within the same state, then it becomes a transaction over here and covered under this state. Why these discussions are a lot more important to us? The levy is fixed only here. The liability to pay tax is fixed here, and all those supply, all those supplier are liable to pay tax here. If you are going to be a supplier of interstate, intra-state supply of goods or services, then yes, you are liable to pay tax under Section 91 with satisfying all the other conditions associated. As we all know, for those five products, until the date notified by government with the recommendations from GST Council. There will be a clear exemption from GST. I would not say exemption. It would not be brought into the tax net of GST. Today, kindly make a note: your levy section, your levy section, section nine one levy section, is excluding your product. When your product is excluded from your levy section, which means it is not levyable to GST. That is why we call it as petroleum products as a non-taxable supply. 
can it be taxed here can i tax a laptop yes can i tax a mouse yes can i tax a furniture yes can i tax a paint yes can i tax a construction material yes can i tax liquor no can i tax petroleum product no because the power to tax is missing a levy is missing by the supplier so coming back here the issue the issue is here in case of suppliers in case of supplier supplier if he is engaged in an interstate supply of goods or services he is liable to pay tax that is a one line understanding of it. 93 discuss about 93 discuss about as per the recommendations of gst council central government in recommendation with gst council specify goods or services on which tax will be paid under reverse charge by the recipient see this is what is the most careful point in 90 as per the recommendations of gst council not on all goods look the wording here all all intrastate supply but we are talking of what specified goods or services tax on which would be payable under reverse charge what do we mean by reverse charge when the tax is paid by the recipient we will call it as reverse charge and all provisions will apply to the recipient as if he is the person liable to pay tax in relation to such supply of goods or services. All provision will apply means value will be determined as per section 15, time of supply will be determined as per section 12 and 13. Maximum rate of tax cannot be more than 20%. All, all means all. For us, the core discussion here in 93 is not all goods and services liable under reverse charge notified goods and services alone liable under reverse charge in case of those notified goods and services alone rcm is applicable that notified goods or services also should be what basically it should be a intrastate supply when it is an intrastate supply only it is covered here if it is interstate supply it will go to five three what are the notified goods? We have a small list. Don't be much bother about the list. Don't try to copy it at all. We are going to discuss each entry verbatim sometime in our next class, which will be discussing predominantly on reverse charges only. So that time we will spend and take it up. For the time being, understand cashew nut, feed leaf, used vehicle of government, silk yarn, tobacco, all these products. On all these products, no doubt, on all these products, the recipient of those goods are liable to pay. Similarly, on services, could be your transportation services of GTA, right, preferably lorry freight, advocate services, director services, services by government, insurance agent, factory agent, all this is already known to you. Something new came over the last one and a half years are uh, services provided by direct selling agent, business correspondent, or all those uh, services in connection with the land and uh, services by a uh, original author, author of the books, or it is going to be your uh, services in connection with motor vehicle and security services. These are all newly introduced services. Every services we will take individually who is the supplier, who is the recipient and we will also connect it with the exemptions wherever possible and read through it in a little more detailed way in our uh, subsequent session, not, not on today's discussion. What is that you are trying from 9.3? My intention of 9.3 is very simple. Not all goods are liable for reverse chance. If, it, if the service that is received by you, if the goods that is received by you 
is covered under the list that is mentioned by the government. Then as a recipient, you are liable to pay tax. Levy itself is entrusted on the recipient. Liability to pay tax is not on the supplier. Liability to pay tax is on the recipient. If an agriculturist sell cashew nut to a trader, trader is the recipient, agriculturist is a supplier. Liability to pay tax itself is on the trader who is purchasing it. Raw cotton is sold by an agriculturist to me. Then the law puts the liability into my hand, not in the hand of the person who is selling it. Actually, I am the recipient. Law says, yes, you are the recipient. You are procuring an identified or a notified product. Then it is your responsibility to pay tax. I would not collect tax from him. I would only collect tax from you. Sir, after payment, I am eligible for entitled for input tax credit. All that is there. Yes, you are eligible for credit. But today, there is a levy on your hand. If you receive some goods, in other words, in a layman's word, not only on income, you will be liable to pay GST. Even on expenses, you are liable to pay GST. Expenses in connection with procurement of goods or procurement of various services. Government has completely reworded a section 9.4. Similarly, 5.4 also getting reworded. Completely means completely reworded the section where in which they came out and told not only specified category of goods or services, it is specified cat class of registered person. Sir, what is the difference between 9.3 and 9.4? Often people will ask us question. Our answer is very simple. 9.3 also pushes for reverse charge. 9.4 also pushes for reverse charge. The only difference is 9.3 specified goods and services alone liable for reverse charge. 9.4 one step above specified person specified goods and services which is applicable to a class of person not all. I'm sure we are all aware because of the gold being fraudulently brought in and this gold smuggling is uh, high. Government is coming up with a new proposal of uh, somehow monitoring this activity. So tomorrow government can come out with a proposal. Every jewellery shop, any person who is engaged in jewellery business, if we procure, if we procure the used gold from a person, from any person. He is liable to pay tax under reverse charge. How one can bring it? You cannot stop government from coming up with all these propositions. So, points for our discussion is 9.4 also discuss about reverse charge only, but 9.4 from a different leg, 9.3 from a different leg, 9.3 only come out and say note notified or specified goods or services whereas 9.4 would come out and say specified class of person specified category of services which is liable to reverse charge moving forward from this discussion based on the recommendations of GST council everything will come only from recommendations of GST council Specified category of services. The tax will be paid. Look at the noting. Tax will be paid by e-commerce operator. If such services are supplied through e-commerce operator. And all the provisions under this law will apply as if the e-commerce operator is the person liable for paying tax in relation to such supply of service. First understanding, not on all transaction, only specified transaction e-commerce operator is liable to pay tax. On specified transaction e-commerce operator is liable to pay tax. Okay, let him be liable to pay tax. This e-commerce operator 
will pay tax who will not then pay tax supplier also will not pay tax recipient also will not pay tax now is it applicable for all e-commerce operator no specified category of e-commerce operator who is engaged in supply of services so basically if he is going to be an e-commerce operator for goods he is not bothered by this entry if he is an e-commerce operator providing certain services notified services then he is bothered if the e-commerce operator is going to be engaged in the following services transportation of passengers by radio taxi transportation of passengers by radio taxi which means um, ola uber are the best examples there is a supplier of a cab for ola there is a recipient who use a cab services there is ola Ola is a person who just merely connects both these two people. The supplier who has a cab, he actually provides services to the recipient by using the e-commerce operator. Government told, I cannot ask the supplier to pay tax. I would ask you, the e-commerce operator, to pay tax. Similarly, all those services provided by accommodations in hotel, Inns, guest house, club, and the campsites, or other other commercial place meant for residential or lodging purposes. Except the person supplying services of e-commerce operator is liable for registration under CGST. That is an exclusion. That is to say, if the hotel or the inn or the guest house or the clubs are registered person, are registered person. <laughs> This discussion, except when the person supplying services to e-commerce operator is liable for registration and registration. If the hotel is registered, then the hotel will pay tax, the club will pay tax, the guest house will pay tax, who will not pay tax, OIO will not pay tax. If the hotel or the residence uh, residency place, the place where that is used for residential purposes, temporary staying purposes, those places are unregistered. Then, then the respective, then the respective e-commerce operator will pay tax, not the residency will pay tax. So I would take up an example to have a better clarity. Why? Of course, now may not be very right to discuss this. Why? Books for its customer. Books for its customer. A room in Shams residency, which is a small lodge, not registered. Turnover less than twenty lakhs, so they are maintaining like that. Oyo books one more room for his customer in a particular branded hotel. Let's say GRT residence. Both are residency, both are temporary lodging. But GRT residency is a registered person, whereas Sham residency is an unregistered person. When OIO supplies services to GRT residency, GRT residency will pay tax under forward charge. OIO is not liable to pay tax on that transaction. However, when OIO uses the services of Sham residency, who is an unregistered person at that time, OIO has to pay tax to government. OIO cannot wash out its liability. When an e-commerce operator liable to pay tax, when he will be liable to pay tax, when his recipient is unregistered. Sir, can I pick up the same proposition for Ola Uber also? Kindly go and check there. After a semicolon, it, the law has stopped it. Here, after full stop, they write very clearly, except where the person supplying such services through e-commerce operator is liable for registration under GST. If the person is liable for registration, let that person pay tax. Basically, if an unregistered person supply through e-commerce operator as the e-commerce operator to pay tax, same in the case of housekeeping services, plumbing services, or carpentry services. 
if the plumbing housekeeping carpentry services are provided through an unregistered person then the respective app company e-commerce operator company will be liable to pay tax under liable to pay tax to the government in case if the person who is going to supply the goods through e-commerce operator that supplier is going to be a registered person then that registered person will pay tax so kindly remember that one point only three services are notified by the government and it is kept as it is government has not touched to this point at all but on this three services so two services accommodation housekeeping plumbing carpentry both sir all these services if your supplier is registered supplier would pay tax e-commerce operator will not pay tax for the supplier 91 will operate or 51 will operate in case in case if the if the recipient sorry if the supplier who is going to supply through e-commerce operator that supplier of services unregistered then the e-commerce operator same is the case when it comes to interstate supply, no change in the wording. The only wording changes you would come across is uh, 5 1 section number followed by interstate supply and 40 percent. Rest all will remain same. All interstate supply of goods or services other than alcoholic liquor for human consumption and petroleum product are excluded. And the value will be determined as per section 15, rate, time of supply, everything. In case of imported goods, the tax will be collected as part of additional customs duty under the customs. That is going to be an additional followed by. In case of levy, petroleum product, same situation. In case of reverse charge, yes, on notified services, notified services or notified goods, RCM would be applicable. The government has power to notify a special category of person. Based on that, it can be determined. And coming back over here, e-commerce operator, same position. See, when you are aware of uh, intrastate supply, interstate supply is going to be state automatically. Now, coming back here. Come back, revisit this diagram once again. This is what we have been trying to discuss over here. If it is an intrastate supply, then Section 9 of CGST Act and Section 9 of, SGS, 9 of SGST Act is applicable. There can be only three possibilities for a transaction. You will ask either the supplier to pay tax, which is forward charge. Many times only forward charge is applicable. Or you will ask the recipient to pay tax only on identified transaction. Exceptionally, on three transactions, you will ask e-commerce operator to pay tax. Where location of supplier and place of supply happens within the state as per section 9 of CGST Act. As per section 5 of IGST Act, same if it is an interstate supply. Sir, how interstate supply is possible? Very simple. Location of supplier is uh, Delhi. Place of supply is Andhra Pradesh. Advocate services. Location of supplier is Delhi. Place of supply is Karnataka. Same advocate services. Director services. There is a possibility. Some, see, we are not thinking of it. That's what is our challenge. When we start thinking it, we will fall in our place. There is only three people liable to pay tax or three people levyable to tax under normal levy. Many times supplier, rarely on identified transactions, recipients, exceptionally e-commerce operator. If an e-commerce operator deals with that particular three services, yes, that to e-commerce operator for notified services, not all e-commerce operator. Don't bring your uh, Amazon uh, Flipkart into loop. I was very clear. It is only the game for Ola, Uber, OIO, uh, and Urban Club. That's all. The, the government is very clear. Only on these services I want. Uh, uh, Swiggy, I don't bother about you. Somato, I don't bother about you. This, the, there are hundred other apps. We are not bothered about it. We are bothered about only this five, six apps that are associated with that. That sums up our broader discussion on levy perspective. Consciously, I pressed up interstate supply little uh, specifically. 
because of a very simple reason i want to revisit this whole discussion once again on our next session and then then from there if we take forward towards the reverse charge it would be a great understanding why because that small requirement is required that small refresh of that memory is required i'll ensure the presentation is little amended and share to you at least till this portion or till composite supply maybe in a day or two uh, we will try to push that at our end because to some extent those corrections are still pending once that is done you can have a recap of it and when we meet in our next session we should be in a position to have uh, start deciding on all these factors whether it would be a intra state supply or inter state i do at this level uh, in, instead of stepping into a different topic and taking up little further and keeping half discussed i would wind up today's discussion at this level and uh, we would take up our uh, next topic which would be reverse charge mechanism in detail heat services which would run for about at least two sessions because you have a roughly about uh, Uh, there are 3 different entries to discuss entry by entry and when we discuss it along with exemptions it will it will take a little little while time extra because then only you can fix on the case studies and the propositions more comfortably than in the regular so we'll do one thing we'll wind up today's discussion at this level uh, thank you all for effective and patient listening thank you